everybody, and welcome, and thank you very much for joining us today at the beautiful Hobby Center in Houston, Texas. Houston, noted by the Houston Chronicle as being one of the most diverse cities in the USA. We're very excited about all of that. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. My name is Eileen J. Morris, and I'm the artistic director of the Ensemble Theater on Main Street and a board member of Midtown. And I'm delighted to be here with you today. Did you know that the, Houston, that the city of Houston is one of those that was voted or that named by Forbes as being the coolest city in the US, one of the coolest cities in the USA? not talking about cool because of temperature, because we know that's not true, but we are talking about cool because of all of the wonderful diverse activities and the creative energy that's in this city. We are here today to share the findings of the Houston, Houston's first creative economy study. And I'm honored to be joined here today behind the podium by some of our city's most respected creative professionals. Thank you very much, all of you, for being here with us today. Together, we represent you know, I don't know if you remember when you were young and you put your hands in mud pies or you had big boxes and you made these big buildings come out of there or you were in the living room when you did Michael Jackson routines. <laughs> Those kind of creative energies are these people back here with us today. <laughs> they are fashion designers, they are architectures, digital fabrication, visual art, photography, graphic design, film, literature, dance, just to name a few. We are musicians, vocalists, curators, artistic directors, novelists, costumers, copyrights, set designers, textile, textile designers, interior designers, choreographers, advertising art directors, lighting designers, painters, and photographers. We are the creative voices of traditional businesses, and we are the artistic vision for many creative opportunities. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge some elected official. Mr. Steve Castallo is here, council member. <laughs> Thank you very much for all that you all do to help to continue to drive the art. This study is a project of the Houston Arts Alliance in partnership with the University of Houston and the Greater Houston Partnership. As the city's local arts agency, the Arts Alliance is our municipal agency responsible for so many things, but primarily for advancing all of the arts here in Houston through capacity building, through business volunteers, through civic arts, through grants, through resource building and building, helping us to build a national reputation for the arts in the city of Houston. I'd like to introduce Jonathan Gluss, the president and CEO of the Houston Arts Alliance, to share some major points from the recent creative economy study. And then we will hear from Mayor Parker, Don Henderson, Dr. John Andell, and Mark Belcher. At the conclusion of this press conference, we invite you to join us for a reception, and the speakers will be able to answer questions that you all may have. Thank you. Jonathan. Thank you, Eileen. Great way to start. Um, in advance, I want to thank Mayor Parker for being here with us today. Nearly three years ago, Houston Arts Alliance and the University of Houston convened a group of creative, academic, and policy leaders to discuss the broad creative sector in Houston. At that time, a number of creatives, my arm has to get farther and farther. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, a number of creatives in Houston were, were gathering informally and formally to share ideas and resources. The TED Two Talks were beginning at the University of Houston, a creative economy summit was being planned at Rice, and a fervent dialogue was taking place in fabrication sites, studios, galleries, and classrooms across the city. Although we were talking about our creative work, as a community we were not talking about the real impact of this energy within the context of our larger economy. We do do a good job of tracking the economic impact of our nonprofit arts organizations and their audiences, and the findings, as we all know, are extraordinary. But we had not tracked in any formal way the economic impact of the actual creatives, both in the for-profit and the non-profit sectors. And as we know, they are the driving force of much of the business in this city, as we can see here today. As explained in the study, a number of cities and regions have been conducting 
uh, excuse me, of conducting this work for quite a while. The findings have, been aid have aided business and government leadership to better leverage this workforce in their businesses and provide schools direction in preparing students for the new economy. This report represents, uh, interestingly and importantly, this report represents the 10 county metropolitan area, which is the Greater Houston Partnership footprint, who is also a partner in this study. We compared uh, our city in this study to those of Chicago, Dallas, Los Angeles, Miami, Philadelphia, and, th and doing so over a 10-year period from 2001 to 2011. And then we also looked at projections into 2016. Now why these cities? We identified cities that are most similar in size to Houston, but we also wanted to look at Los Angeles because that city has really been the benchmark in um, excuse me, measuring their creative economy over the last few years to ensure, because we're in Houston, to ensure that the findings would be defendable, explainable, and within the context of Houston, we were very conservative, and frankly, much more conservative than other cities. We worked with Idaho-based EMSI to conduct the analysis. Hamilton Galloway, an, an economist with EMSI, is here today with us to answer questions and methodology. Hamilton, I hope you're here someplace. But Hamilton will be here for questions. This study looks at the size of the creative economy by total employment and overall economic activity. It looks at three job types. Non-creative workers in creative industries, creative workers in creative industries, and creative workers in non-creative industries. So let me say that again. Non-creative workers in creative industries, creative workers in creative industries, and creative workers in non-creative industries. The findings are huge, surprised all of us. And after three years in the making, Mayor Parker, I am honored to turn the podium over to you to actually announce the findings. Thank you. Sit down now, right? <laughs> Here they are. Everyone knows that I'm a huge supporter of the arts in Houston and uh, try to advocate for them at every opportunity. And we have looked hard at the amount that the arts, and by that I mean creative people in creative work, <laughs> contribute to the overall Houston economy. Uh, the uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau, which is represented here today, looks really closely at cultural tourism. And when we bring people to Houston for other things, what, what are the amenities that are available? Where do they go? We have quantified in the past how much the arts contribute to the Houston economy versus sports, for example. But the business of Houston is business. And our eyes are always on the bottom line. And when we look at the arts, with a capital A, creative people in, in a creative industry or creative jobs, we neglect the broader impact of the creative economy on our local Houston economy. And because we are very interested in job creation and sustainability over time of our economy here, it was important to us to put the arts into that broader context. The good news is, while we knew we were an arts destination and really making our mark on the international map as an art city, the overall creative economy is much, much larger and has a much bigger impact, not just in Houston, but in the surrounding area. There are, by our definition, uh, nearly 150,000 people doing more than $9 billion of economic impact annually. That's more employees. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's more employees than are in our renowned medical center. Houston has the fastest growing creative sector of all of the cities in the study. Of course, we already knew that Houston was the fastest growing economically of, of any other region in the country, but the creative economy is a big element of that. Only Houston and Dallas grew over the last decade in terms of their creative economies. Houston at 8%, Dallas at, at 1% while many other cities had a decline. People move or vote with their feet, and, and we know that. Uh, I've worked really hard as mayor to enhance Houston's coolness factor. <laughs> and I... <laughs> And I use that phrase a lot. And uh, who knew that suddenly that, 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 that Forbes would come out, Forbes? Coolness? Not how I, not, <laughs> that Forbes would come out and acknowledge that, that Houston is, in fact, the coolest place to be in the United States. But we already knew that, yes. did we not? Yes. But, the growth that we've experienced over the last decade is going to continue. Houston is projected to grow another 8% in our creative economy, uh, doubling in uh, percentage growth from the last decade. Uh, Houston's median wage for creatives was higher than in other cities. And of course, as we all know, one of the reasons that Houston has literally grown as a city is as people uh, vote with their feet, they come here because not only can they find a job here, but that job goes farther because we're a very affordable city compared to many of the other cities in the study. Uh, it is no surprise that most of the impact is in the greater Houston Harris County area, but again, it's important to emphasize that this study looked at the, the 10 County area and uh, this has an impact throughout the region. Now, why is this type of study important? Uh, going back to what I said at the beginning, the business of Houston is business, and we're always focused on the bottom line. We wanted some quantifiable data. We wanted the ability to compare ourselves to peer cities uh, in an apples-to-apples -apples way, and in a way that could be tested and judged by other people, instead of just talking about the number of people who attend our uh, performing arts uh, activities, or the number of people who directly list themselves as artists, for example. But what is the broader uh, impact? And let's do it in a study that can be peer-reviewed, if necessary. This is a great amount of data. It has a really exciting message, but it's also just one more step in the evolution of the city of Houston as the greatest place in America to live, to work, to raise a family, and to create. So thank you for being here today. Thank you so much, Mayor Parker, for all you do and for being the coolest mayor in cool Houston. <laughs> for always believing and supporting the artistic endeavors of this great cultural city. Next, I'd like to introduce Don Henderson, board member of the Greater Houston Partnership, executive committee member, and chairman of the Cultural Tourism Collaborative. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, from the Greater Houston Partnership's perspective, this study is really about workforce development. Uh, historically, we've tended to identify arts and culture as a quality of life attraction uh, for business to our city. And the arts have always been a tremendously strong asset for the GHP when we're out trying to get business to relocate. We always play up the fact that the environment, the quality of life that they offer is superb. But what this study does, in essence, is it provides us the tools to rethink the way we look at the broad creative sectors and invest in, the educated, in a highly educated workforce. As Mayor Parker said, in 2011, 
Creative business in Houston had an estimated uh, economic impact of more than nine billion. However, in that year, there was more than $21 billion in creative industry sales in our region, of which ne nearly $10 billion of that was imported from elsewhere into our region. What does that mean? It means we clearly have a tremendous opportunity to grow in the creative economy, to grow it in Houston, and keep those dollars at home. Now, although Houston's creative economy has many large corporations uh, in architecture, publishing, advertising, music production, small business makes up the minority of the creative economy. I'm sorry, the majority of the creative economy. <laughs> Let me restate that. Most of the businesses are small, all right? It's a small type you have there. And small business is a major priority for the Greater Houston Partnership. And we will be advocating for investment and business incentives to close the gap and bring more of that $10 billion right here in our area. Thank you. Thank you, Don. We appreciate everything that the Greater Houston Partnership does for the, uh, the city of Houston and for helping to make art happen. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce Dr. John Antell, Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost at the University of Houston. Thanks, Eileen. Thanks, Eileen. It's really exciting to be here. As uh, someone, to reiterate what someone said a few minutes ago, the study really started about three years ago on the University of Houston campus. And we've continued to play a role. I see a lot of my colleagues here from the Laffer Gallery and the, the Art School and the Mitchell Center for the Arts. Um, I don't, I, let me just sort of amplify a little bit on some of the things that the mayor and Don talked about. And let me do that by sort of uh, relating to you a kind of an interesting story and a, an event that happened not that many years ago. Actually, the occasion was uh, Michael Porter, who was a professor at the Harvard Business School, came to the Houston Forum and talked a little bit about job creation, the Houston economy, a lot of things that Don was talking about. And what he said uh, uh, was very interesting to me, and I've always sort of taken it to heart, and, and it's really been a, a, foundation, uh, a foundational idea for what we've done at U of H in the arts. And what he said is this, he said, Houston, great job, look what you've done in terms of the growing the economy and the jobs. Uh, in the 70s, we had a little bit of a few setbacks in the 80s. As I, would be, I went through that, okay, in the 90s. But what he said was this. He said, look, if Houston is really going to take its place as the world-class city, this a great international city, it's not just a matter of attracting jobs per se or just any kind of worker. What's really important for the future of Houston is building and attracting a skilled workforce. And that's a lot of what the University of Houston about. We are in the higher education business. That's what we do, but there's more. What he also said, Professor Porter, he said, in order to attract and retain a skilled workforce, you have to have those cultural amenities, those creative industries, because for people with those high skill levels who are creative on their jobs, they want to be creative in their life. <laughs> and so if you don't have that culture, those amenities, that environment, you will fail to attract the kind of workforce that we've seen. You know, I come from Santa Clara Valley, California, so we can talk about Silicon Valley, we can talk about Boston. But this is why uh, I'm trying to connect a number of things here. The arts in the city, jobs, arts and jobs, University of Houston, higher education. This is why this is so important, and this is why we've been such an active participant and partner. Uh, I look forward to continue to work for you, work for you and with you. Thank you for having me today. I would like to now invite Mark Melcher, Chairman of the Board of Houston Arts Alliance, for final comments. Uh, th thank you, Mayor Parker, Don, Dr. Adentel, and Jonathan and Eileen. Um, you framed the importance of this study so well. Um, I come from a finance background. I'm one of the non-creatives from a non-creative industry. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I tend to look at these types of studies with an eye towards a return on investment. 
My family's invested in the creative sector for generations. The Melcher Center for Public Broadcasting at the University of Houston to the Menil Collection. We've supported artists, historians, preservationists, and curators, as well as many of our arts and culture institutions. It's an honor to be here today, a little scary, uh, in front of so many creative people that we've had the privilege of working with and so many others that I have yet to meet. Uh, I believe in this city and our potential to be among the world's great cities. And I believe that all great cities are ultimately driven by their creative, um, and creativity and innovation. This first creative economy study not only measures the impact of many facets of the creative sectors, but if used well, it can be a tool for leaders in business, academia, and government to advance our city through these creatives, you. Uh, greater incentives to grow small business, increased incentives for filming and more academic opportunities in the creative industries are among the key areas in which we can continue to grow in the field. Investing in and recruiting creative businesses should be the key components of the work of the GHP and the City of Houston. Most importantly, we need to tell the story outside of Houston. It's critical that leadership in all levels spread the word to creative businesses in California, for example, that Houston is the place to expand or relocate their business because we have the workforce and the infrastructure. On behalf of the Houston Arts Alliance, I hope that each of you will go out and share the news that Houston is the new frontier for the creative economy. So there you have it. Thank you very much, uh, Jonathan, Mayor, Dr. Antel, Don, Mark, all of you all for the leadership that you all have, leadership that helps to generate the arts, their love of learning, creativity, the willingness to explore, risk taking, and to just make art happen. We are in show biz, Mayor. <laughs> so thank you very much for your comments. As you can see, Houston's creative economy is well poised for continued success. On behalf of the Houston Arts Alliance, I'd like to invite those of you that are here to join us for a reception in the mezzanine. For members of the media, please stay and our speakers will stay behind to answer a few questions for you. I'd like to, and for more information about the Creative Economy Study, go to the uh, HAA website and download the PDF. And I'd like to leave you with the words of the wonderful, great, late August Wilson, Pulitzer Prize winner, playwright. Art does not change the world, it changes people. And people change the world. Thank you. Thank you.